Oh, we're rolling. We're rolling. So the camera is on. Is so, no one told me that. Hi, Chris. Hi, Hi Internet. Hello, Hello guys. Internet. Uh, so today, uh, welcome to show 16. 16. 16. With uh, Matt Wells. From, Hi, Matt Wells. From, from Matt Wells. that day in North, North Yorkshire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. North yeah, yeah, Yorkshire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. God's yeah, own yeah. country, they say. So. Yeah. It's a bizarre uh, turn of events because Chris is in a suit. Um, we've got a we, lack we've, of space on the table. Lack of space because we've won a hat full of awards, uh, okay. which is awesome. Okay. Uh, but anyway, um, what should we... Uh, Start the show. Who's yeah. rolling? Roll V2. Okay, so uh, top of the show, uh, what's the cheese board on the desk? It's not a cheese board. I want to use it for a cheese board, but it's Chris, so, our, so our good friend here, Chris, if you read the text, says... It said, Grantham Journal Business Awards, Business Person of the Year 2018, Chris England. Actual Business Person of the Year. Yeah, Excellent. Chris. And where's this wood from? Uh, it's from the Beaver Estate, which is or the Belvoir. The Belvoir Estate. Not from local. Uh, from the Beaver Estate. So yeah, it's a it's a thing. So um, yeah, you need to put yeah. some oil in there if you want to use it as a cheese board. Bit of right? teak. <laughs> bit of teak. Yeah. It looks like a bit of scaffolding board. It does, doesn't it? <laughs> but um, but yeah, I was pretty pleased with that. Um, but we've got a little. Uh... Or oh, is it on double side? Yeah. Wow! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look at that. Yeah. Um, just because, just to fulfil my own satisfaction, should we have a little video? Yeah, go on. Yeah, go on. Then. Yeah, go on. Then. So I'm very pleased to announce that this year's Business Person of the Year is... It's Chris England. There you go, look. Look how happy he was. So, oh, he still are you is. sure that's not last year's winner? No, this on, is... On the no, I have to give it back. No, <laughs> no, it's definitely mine forever. And uh, at Christmas, we'll put some brie on it. Oh, that's, uh, very, that's very Yorkshire. So yeah. if that was a North Yorkshire award, yeah. this would be 2018's winners. Yeah. And on the back, you'd have 2018 All the other things <laughs> yeah. back at the end of the year. Well, maybe I'll turn it over and literally just eat cheese off the back of it. Yeah, I'd eat you off the back, yeah. Awesome. And um, uh, Matt and I what have got what runners up in a couple of awards. Awesome. Silver medal spot. Uh, silver medal spot for uh, property video stations, which is which is great. I went along as well and had copious amounts. A couple of shirts. <laughs> See, I'm going to get rid of this because it's, <laughs> so it's, uh, it's all put those down. It's good we danced, um, we laughed. But yeah, we did, we did, and it was awesome. Good so, anyway. good. So, well, we've got Matt Wells in here today, we have. and I've been following it on uh, that there social media on for, the interweb on the interweb for the last six months, and what he's been chucking out, and also in the land of. Landlord and vendor farming. Yes, you changed the name, Chris. You have changed the name. Why did just quickly? Why did you change the name? Because unfortunately, the landlord farming technique, unfortunately for those that adopted it, unfortunately got the estate agents more vendors and house sellers to use their agents. Oh, what a oh. shame! That must be awful. Oh, what these fees? Oh. Uh, so, so, more um, business. Luke Sinclair, um, both Luke Sinclair and Alan Bat. Friend of the show, the Batman, Dan, the Batman. Uh, from Wigan, has basically said that he has been doing some great work with with using the articles about the property market. Um, well, his article, Alan, your article is looking slick. I need at the minute. Alan. Can you send us a headshot and then I'll stick you to the Batmobile and then we can have every time we mention the Batman, we can have the Batman. You can in roll Batmobile. him in. Well, what I can we do? Can roll him in. Yeah. We should roll him in. Oh, New let's feature. in fact let's digi feature. let's let's digitally add him. Hang on. Okay. <laughs> The Batman. Excellent. And uh, maybe if you can, <laughs> well, during editing, because I know you're not very good at... Uh, whoa, doing... whoa, whoa. We just want to run us up in editing. OK. <laughs> OK. Uh, maybe, yeah, we'll get to you in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> uh, maybe, um, Alan's getting some great feedback from you, um, a, a particular estate agency leaflet that he's using. Yeah. OK. okay. okay. And maybe if I could, if you remember, remind me, I'll email it to you. Or it's in the Facebook group. Yeah. And what he's got, this is one interesting, is... He's been getting some really posh houses on the market in Wigan. Right. Six, seven hundred thousand pounds, which in Wigan is, is a, a lot of a lot of a lot of, of, a lot of, of, a lot of <laughs> yeah. And basically what he's been doing is is on the inside of his A4 folded to A5, he's got an article, quite an in-depth article written about the with the Wigan property market. Big in depth, quite lots of stats. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lots of stats. I wonder who wrote that for him. But then, <laughs> okay. 
But then on the on the outside, he's got posh houses that he sold. Right. Okay, not not cheaply, it's posh. And yeah. he's putting them specifically through posh people's doors. Oh, yeah. yeah. And what he's been getting is a couple of, li quite a few listings at the moment from people who say, hold on, this person seems to, A, know what he's talking about because he's written up the yeah. article, which again, you could probably show on the screen now. Yeah. Da -da. Da -da. And then on the outside, he's selling similar properties. So it made me think top tips. Yeah. Top tips. Is, yeah. is you could almost do a couple of leaflets. You could have um, cheapies on the outside and yeah. through through cheapy doors, yes. middle range like middles, me. and poshies for, yeah. for, for the posh. Conversely, our guest, Matt, yeah. how, doesn't print. Yes, you know. paperless office. Paperless, paperless office. Which Absolutely. is great, we think. Absolutely, completely yeah. paperless. We, we have been since day one. Right. We, we, we don't print, we don't post, we don't fax. Everything is embedded into PDF documents, so instruction contracts, memorandum of sales, yeah, yeah, offer yeah. letters. Everything just goes into a PDF and we email. It's as simple as that. And it's always there. Yeah, yeah. So, Matt, who, who are you? Uh, what is your agency? Uh, and why, why and the hell why have you driven you, Why have you driven from Yorkshire to see us? Who am I? Good question. <laughs> How long have you got? Where have I come from? Um, well, we've only got so much space on the car. No worries. <laughs> well, <laughs> cut a long story short, I've got about 20 years agency experience. Started off very, very late in, in a state agency. Yeah. I'm, I'm 49 cyclist. now. Ex, ex semi pro cyclist. Oh, yeah. Love that. Believe that. it or not, Love I'm 49. That. I've been in the Did industry. Did you shave your legs? No, no. they all do. Yeah, they, they do. do. Stream Let him finish. No comment. <laughs> So, the, Sorry, the problem when you shave your legs is, where do you stop? <laughs> yeah. you know, I believe it's called manscaping. Where, where, yeah. where do you stop the shaving <laughs> without it looking weird? Um, <laughs> it's like an all-round tan type yeah. thing. Yeah. And if you keep shaving, believe me, it, it takes years off it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Good to know. Moving, to to know. moving story swiftly on, yeah. I'm, I'm 49 now. I've been in residential agency 20 Short years. Paper, so <laughs> I, was, I was very late. <laughs> In, into the industry, I was a late developer yeah. coming into. Did you age. start in corporates? Or no, no. I, I started or? as the oldest junior neg in town. Nice. Because yeah. I needed a job. Yeah, in, yeah. In, a, in a household firm, household. Yeah, yeah. That's no, uh, small, in, small independent. Oh, Stephen Edge. Yeah. Uh, the posh people call it St. Edge. Did they really? Oh, did they? St. Edge. St. Edge. That's like Shea Boo. Shea's bush. But I started my agency career as the oldest junior neg in town. Yeah. I was probably the only junior neg that was shaving in my life, not my legs. And I worked for a great little independent called Mather Marshall. Right, they, yeah. they had a little office in Stevenage Old Town. They had a, an office in Hatfield, I think, and then a oh, little right, office yeah. in Nebworth. And, and I, I basically, I needed a job. Yeah. Prior to that, I was working um, as, as a mechanic, as a bike mechanic, building and fixing bikes. Right. Uh, that was Monday to Friday, and weekends, I was a semi-sponsored cyclist. Yeah, so I would, nice. I, would, I would fix and build bikes Monday to Friday, and then weekends, I would race bikes. Yeah, right. So yeah, I was yeah. like pig in proverbial yes yeah, yeah. but the problem with that is that there, there was no money in it mm. and you, you have to at some point make that quantum leap from enjoying what you do to getting getting a ride yeah, 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 which yeah, is a sponsorship yeah, yeah. yeah and I, I was i was never good enough well, i don't think i was good enough to make that right i'm gonna literally go all out one season and try and get a professional ride yeah, where you then get you get paid to ride right. the bike so the company that i used to cycle for would give me all my gear but they never paid me. Right. So and that's brilliant. You know, when, when you were a young lad, you've got, you know, 20, you pay the mortgage there, mate, 25 yeah. grand with the bikes yeah. in the shed, but yeah. that don't pay the mortgage. No, no. So at the time, um, I, I was starting to enter the world of home ownership and I, I, I needed a job. Yeah. So I went to uh, have a chat with Peter, Peter Anstey at Mather Marshall and basically said, give us a job. Yeah. Yeah. I, said, yeah. I need a job. I see you advertising in the newspaper for a junior neg. Come on, take a punt on me. Yeah. And he did. Um, and I was obviously quite good at it. So, so what? Um, so obviously, fast forward from there to now. Yes. You now run your own agency. I Just do. in between, um, big in the game. I worked for Big in the Game Heart and Big in the Game Aaron as new businessman and setting up uh, new agencies. In, in fact, involved with Heart setting up their on their Tesco's thing. Oh yeah, yeah, that's cool. So, which failed. Okay, but they. <laughs> But, but a couple of years ago, he set up his own estate agency in that there, North Yorkshire. Yeah, which is where we are now. Yes. Uh, so you've got your own agency in North Yorkshire. Yes, I have. And uh, in, in, a, in a, sort of a, in a quirky but also awesome way, your own coffee shop. Yes. Um, which gives you a bit of a release. He only works yeah, release. two days a week. Well, no, he doesn't. No business owner works two days a week. He works two days a week. In agency. It, okay. Physically in. He works two days a week. Work two days a week. Okay. 
I think his fees are too cheap. Okay, what for quality purpose? I don't know, I just think they're too cheap. I'm sure I'm going to be shot down in flames in a second. <laughs> um, um, in fact, he is a gentleman estate agent. Ooh, like a gentleman like farmer. Like a gentleman farmer. But I'll tell you what, I've just been interviewing him now, and I've never met such a happier estate agent. Mm. Work-life balance, you yeah, mentioned. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Uh, absolutely, yeah. The, the, the philanthropist farmer. Yeah. 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 The, the, the Why, um, come on then, because we have... A lot of people come on the show. We see and talk to people in industry and this industry all the time. A lot of them are of the opinion, oh, you know, the downtrodden, the, 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 you know, the, the, you know, the scourge of, 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 uh, the, online of guys. the online guys. And we also have, you know, estate agents aren't a particularly well viewed occupation, but y you're the opposite of all of that. Do you know what he does? He said, he goes online. Well, I was going to ask him. I'm going, well, no, I'm going to, I don't, no, this is going to blow you up. This blew my mind. He goes online and says, I'm only going to put on so many houses this month. And he, he decides who he's going to put on the market. So why are you so happy, Matt? Come on. Why am I so happy? Um, I've, I've been on the horrible side of the state agency. Yeah. You know, I, I found myself from a small independent knowing the reason why every single person was selling to us. Yeah. Knowing yeah. why Mr. and Mrs. Brown had chosen us. Yeah. Knowing where they wanted to move to. But... I was clearly good at what I was doing, and on a few occasions I was headhunted. Right, you know, I, yeah, yeah. I, I went from the small independence to work for Connells as, as a valuer, good and then, agency. and then, yeah, really good agency, mm. and, uh, and, and still a good agency. Yes, yeah. and lead, yeah. leading yeah. the way in terms of corporate agencies. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I went to Connells as a valuer because I was I was a good lister, um, and then I was given my own branch in St. Neots. Right, so I then yeah. found myself branch manager, and the home of Matt Giggs. Yeah, oh, absolutely, yes. friend of the show, show, show. So. I've been in St. Neots for Connells, and one day I took a phone call from a, a recruiter saying, oh, we've, we've heard stuff about you. Do you want to, you know, we can, we, can, we can pay you more money, basically. Yeah, we, yeah. we can put you with a firm. And, and that was Spicer Hart. Yeah, right. So by then, I was getting wrapped up in the egotistical side of mm. salary. Oh, yeah, yeah, I'm going to do bigger and better things. So I moved from one side of the marketplace to another. So I moved from Connells as a branch manager to Hart as a branch manager, doubled my salary. Then I was pulled out of branch to work with uh, John Evans, mm -hmm. who one of the very, very influential figures at Spicer Heart, to start on head office projects. And this was basically Paul Smith throwing money at new ideas. What year was this, roughly? 90s, early noughties? No, do you know what? It was a bit of a hazy day. Yeah. I'm not sure. Yeah. Fair enough. I'm not sure. Fair enough. So I was 10 to 11 to 12. Yeah, somewhere 12. around there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I was pulled out of branch and I was sent down to Colchester to work for Paul and John. That's Evans. HQ. Yes. Right. Spice yeah. Heart HQ. Um, nice building. Nice people. And we were, we were basically part of Paul's team who worked on stuff. So Paul had this idea that we would have a call center where we would generate valuations and we would generate conveyancing leads and we would mm. generate mortgage referrals. And I was part of John Evans's team who were responsible for making Paul's ideas happen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I sold being one of them, the, the one of the very first online collaborations which yeah. failed um, with Tesco's. Right, so yeah. I, I found myself away from agency, I found myself away from working in branch and moving people. So that's what you originally loved stuff. and now yeah, you're yeah, absolutely. not doing that. So I I then was, who did I go to? Warden Partners to do oh, the same thing. Set up a call state. centre yep. for mm -hmm. Warden Partners because I got a phone call from David Lynch, I think it was, or, or one of his recruiters to say, oh, We've heard that you do stuff at Spicer Heart and we want to do what Spicer do Heart that, do. Yeah. We've heard that you've been part of the team that set the call centre up mm -hmm. in Colchester mm -hmm. that generates valuations mm -hmm. for the branch. Um, will you come and have a chat with us? And of course, I was on this egotistical ride. Yeah, sure. yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm getting phoned up by people saying, come and work for us, come and work well, for us. Well, even the phrase headhunted. Okay. Like, so so I it. drove down to um, Kent, Rochester, I think it was, to meet with David Lynch. And to be honest, I didn't like the guy. Mm. Uh, and he offered me the job and I said, no, I don't want to work with you because I found him quite obnoxious and I did a little bit of research on Mr. Lynch and mm. he was quite an obnoxious person. Um, anyway, a few days later, I took a phone call from one of his henchmen, a guy called Lee Crane, who was actually a decent lad. And he said to me, he said, Matt, I've been asked to phone you by David Lynch. Um, David's offered you a job and you've turned him down. Mm. That He's doesn't like, happen very often. No one turns down David Lynch. I said, well, I'm not interested. I said, I'm living in North London. The thought of having to drive from North London to Kent yeah. every day 
yeah. to work in a call centre yeah. to then drive home, I said, I'm not interested. Yeah. And I don't want to work for you. And he said, we'll make it worth your while. So they threw a load of money at me. They gave me a nice <laughs> company car mm -hmm. and a fuel card, nice Audi A3, S-Line mm -hmm. Turbo. Yeah. And, and they threw a load of money at me. And they dropped me into what was then a failing call centre that was set up to generate valuations and business opportunities. So I went in there, kept some of the team, got rid of some of the team, built a dream team, and we made it work. I did that, so, yeah. So, moving on from your, your, your corporate, corporate animal. animal. Corporate, yeah, yeah. Your corporate animal. When, yeah, did you, when did you change? When did, where, when did you shift? Um, my wife and I moved up from North London to North Yorkshire yeah. seven and a half years ago. That's right. Dylan was a year and a half. Mm. So it was when I moved out of North London to Yorkshire, I had to get a new job. Did you breathe again? So you're out of that environment? Almost. And, yeah. almost. I mean, that I, was I, a I, great thing to do, wasn't mm. it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Just, I mean, it was a teacher. Didn't you? Yeah, my wife's a teacher. And we met in London. Um, and my wife moved from Yorkshire to London to oh, do she's her from teacher originally. training. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She, she went to Roehampton Uni and she stayed in London as a newly qualified teacher mm. and that's where we met. Right. Obviously I knew I'd met a Yorkshire lass but I didn't know I'd met a Yorkshire lass whose dreams and aspirations were to go back to yeah, Yorkshire. Yeah. But that's yeah. brave giving up a big corporate job, big money. It is. I walked away from a lot of money. Yeah, but yeah. how did you feel? The weight was starting to lift off my shoulders, mm, nice. but we but we got one obstacle to overcome first. As I was moving, this was the this is when I left Warden Partners. You know, I left Warden Partners when we left North London because mm. there was no way I was going to travel from North Yorkshire down to Rochester. Yeah, I so I said goodbye to my dream team at Warden Partners, and I said goodbye to the call centre, and we were on our way to Yorkshire. Yeah. My wife had got five teaching interviews lined up. Um, I'd got nothing, but we'd made the decision to go because my wife's a teacher. Right. We had one window. Of course, you do, yeah, you do. So yeah. my wife came home and she said, I need to have my notice in on Friday if we are going to move this year mm. from North London to Yorkshire. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. I you said, can't really move mid-term, can you? Yeah. So I said, go for it, do brave, it. Brave. And she said, well, what about you? I said, well, I usually land on my feet. Yeah, we'll be <laughs> Simple rude. as that, we'll yeah. be fine. You get yourself a job uh, and I'll sort something out. So I phoned uh, a chap, Josh, I think, Josh Rayner, the recruiter. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. A friend of the show. Big friend of the show. So show. I'm, Hi, I'm, Josh. Sure, I'm sure it was Josh. Um, need to get him back. Uh, there was a couple of recruiters that I used to work with when I was recruiting for my offices and for my call centres. So I phoned Josh and I said, Josh, I need you to pull out all the stops. I said, I am moving in four weeks' time from North London to North Yorkshire and I have no job. Can you sort me out? Put me in front of someone that's going to appreciate what, what I do and, and where I've come from. Yeah. So he did some research and he phoned me up a few days later and he said, Matt, I've got one company to work with. He said, I don't have much no. in the way of connections. Yeah. You know, I, I recruit state agents, not farmers. Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> he said, I have one option for you. He said, I've set you up uh, a meeting with Kevin Hollingrake at Hunters. Oh yeah. Mm. Good idea. You forgot about that, didn't you? He's MP. Yes, yeah. Kevin Hollingrake, yes. Yeah. So he said, I've set you up a meeting with Kevin Hollingrake and the board of directors at Hunters. And I said, great, what's the job? And he said, there isn't one. You but, just go and chat to them and see what happens. But go and, and speak oh, yeah. with Kevin and the directors. Yeah. He said, my advice is go and sell yourself. He yeah, said, because yeah. there's no job. So I drove up. is the sort of man that would struggle to do that. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, I, I, I drove up from North London to, to York to meet with the board of directors. And I said, right, look, you know, this, I'm going to lay my cards on the table. This is who I am. This is what I've done. This is where I've been. These are the companies that have hired me. These are the companies that have fired me. Yeah. I put my cards on the table. Yeah. I was finding myself unemployable because mm. I was a little bit too opinionated, believe it or not. <laughs> so Kevin said to me, well, we've been doing a bit of research and we've seen that you've done this call centre thing, business yeah. generation yeah. units, BGUs as they were then yeah. called. He said, we're kind of thinking whether or not we can bring that into the franchise model. Mm. So go away, put together a business plan, come yeah. back and see us in a week's time, yeah. and if it works, we, we might be prepared to take a punt on it. So yeah. in a way, you're almost overqualified for, the, for, for what... Yeah, for, 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 for that market in that part of the country, in that region, for what they were doing currently, you'd done things that have far exceeded the scope of that. Oh, yes. Yeah. Uh, so actually, you, you were overqualified. Uh, it's, uh, it's been about a year. Okay. About a year. And then you, and what made you go over to the, to the dark side of setting your own agency? Well, I went to Hunters and I set up the call centre for them. Yeah. Um, which was great. We, we were generating valuations mm. we were generating good listings and good revenue for the franchisees but that was the problem is that hunters are a franchise yeah right, and of course yeah. you cannot 
force something onto the franchisees. And the majority of the franchisees, although they wanted the, the valuation leads, they wanted the extra instructions yeah. that we were doing by sieving through their database and this yeah. opportunity, mm-hmm. the franchisees didn't want to pay for them. Nah. Mm. And they were like, well, we should get this as part of the deal. Yep. Why should we pay your newly set up BGU 10% of our listing fee? We never signed up for this. Yeah. So well. I found myself trying to deliver for hunters as well as trying to keep unhappy franchisees happy, happy yeah. to take my listings. And it was yeah. just becoming a ball ache, yeah, to yeah. be honest. Yeah. So at that point, I was becoming very, very disillusioned with where, where I was mm. in, in my agency career. I'm in Yorkshire, working in a call centre, not really doing what I wanted to do. And I went home one day and I said to my wife, enough's enough. I'm going to do my own agency. Mm. And that was that was the day. Break free of the shackles and yes, got your own ideas day. you've collected. And my over wife the years. being ever supportive, this is my second wife being ever supportive, um, said to me, Well look, Matt, if anyone can do it, you can do it. You've managed offices, you've set up new businesses, okay, you've worked so, for the big companies. So, so how many years have you been in agency and what does the model look like? Because this is the interesting My model. Yes. So um Harwell Estates was set up in two thousand and thirteen. Okay. So we are now two thousand and eighteen, so do the math. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. The model now is very different to the model that I originally dreamt okay. up. Okay. Albeit the core values are still the same. Yeah. Which is to offer an outstanding level of service, similar to what we were doing when I was working for the little sleepy independent, yes, where you knew yeah. the reason why Mr. Yeah. Mrs. Brown were moving and selling yeah, to you. Yeah, sure, yeah. And this is where all agents are probably going to hate me. I wanted to make the service more affordable. Right. And I made it more affordable because I could afford to do it. The yeah. gentleman farmer, Chris. Okay. So... My understanding is that you sit, you, you're in the office two days a week. Yes, on the coalface, on the front line. You employ a part-timer. Correct. And you have 20 to 25% market share. If that's what you say. How the hell have you achieved it? Systems. Yeah. Passion. We'll check you out. John Paul, I'd love you. So yeah. Stephen Brown. Determination. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Simple as that. The model has changed slightly. And I perhaps... It took me a while to get rid of the corporate BS mm. because when I set Harwell Estates up, of course, I went at it as if I was back because in the you, That was ingrained in it you, was yeah. Gonna be, right, I'm going to be better, I'm going to be bigger, I'm going to have more market share, I'm going to, this is going to be huge. Yeah. Until I then realised, well, actually, do I want Harwell Estates to be huge or should I create an agency that is exactly how I want it to be, that suits the needs of my clients? suits my lifestyle and pays me what I'm worth. Yeah. Right. And yeah. that's the model that we've got now. And your fee model is quite interesting because he, um, what Matt does is he has like a listing fee yeah. up front yeah. and a success fee. Oh, cool. Makes sense. But then people, not but, and people can go online and upgrade them their package. What, with like photos? And, yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely, yes. Okay. So, so choose your fee. Yeah. And then choose the level of marketing. Because what he it's does, like a, quite a menu choice then. Absolutely, right? yeah. Basically, he's option, what, what, giving people choice and option. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, what's happening choice. is people are going online, are booking the valuation, and then already getting onto the Facebook shop and actually ordering the extras before he's gone round. Well, so we obviously right. yeah. yeah, it works for us because we are the only agency in the area which is transparent about what we do and what we're going to charge. Right, yeah. Yeah. You go on to 25 estate agents' websites and try and find out what they're going to charge you. <laughs> yeah. That is my challenge for you guys. Yeah, yeah. It's like picking a number out of the brand book. You, you, yeah. you cannot do it. It's how we run our photography company. Exactly you cannot one. do it. Yeah. Yeah. You go to what is currently the Harwell Estates website. We've got a new one launching in November, which is almost finished. But we are totally transparent in terms of what we are going to do for you and what we are going to yeah, charge. Yeah. And awesome. that is all through the Facebook and the social media as well. So when people phone me up to book a valuation, they know what they're going to get. Mm. They know what I charge. It is really just a case of agreeing an initial marketing price, making sure they're happy with the working relationship. Yeah. And what about this thing about choosing the number of listings you're going to have that? Time? Yeah. Um, arrogance, maybe, <laughs> someone said. Um, how, you know, how, can you, how can you be picky in the current market? How can you choose the, the number of people that you want but to But with the with? way you run your model, you only need X amount of properties per month to, I only need to, to take make on that six. happen. Right, there we go. I only so, need to take yeah. on six houses a month. Mm. Uh, you, you can do the math. You know, you take, you take on six and they pay 699 up front. Six times 700 quid. Yeah. And if you get all those, you get your extra five. That's, that's, that's paid the rent and rates and the right move. They're all before you even start. That's paid for my holiday, Chris. Yeah. 
Then we've got the success fee on average, 500 quid. Yeah. Yeah. So, so far this year. Is that year, laddered as well? So, 500. Yeah, so it starts at 500 up to 250. Right. Between 250 and half a million, it's 750. Over 750,000. So you've got skin in the game. Right. Yeah, so you care. So yeah. you're basically sort of. That's what Adam was saying. You're kind of almost. Yeah. Re, you're almost bridging the gap between an online model and an agency model. So yeah. rather than having everything come as a big payday if you flog it, you're saying, well, I'll have a little bit of the purple Brixie model, yep. and then I'll have a little bit of the agency model, and I'll give it a bit well, of fusion. Well, if you think about it, that means that, that, that Matt can put the property on the market... And, and be paid. And, and know that his costs are covered. Yes. yes. And also still give a monkey's uncle... When he sells. Absolutely. ...about selling the property. Well, that's what Adam, that's yeah. what Adam Day said, wasn't it? Well, that's yeah, exactly yeah. what Adam Day said, yeah. Hmm. Yeah. 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 Why yeah. would I not want to work my socks off? Yeah. yeah. Um, oh, no, let's get yeah. this one. Speaking yeah. of, thanks, okay. Yondel. Yondel. Special thanks Sponsor. to Yondel. Sponsored okay. by. Sponsored by Yondel. Sponsored by. Okay. So, Mr. and Mrs. <laughs> Brown, some socks. sent us some socks for free. There you go, mate. Thank, Thank you very much. Oh, Lovely. one down song. Oh, yeah. Oh, and also one down for the sunglasses. One down. For the love of God. One down. Okay, so you can take those away and those away. So Thank you. some freebies from us. Uh, well, actually, from one dome and younger. So why why would I not want to take six hundred ninety nine pounds off Mr. Mrs. Brown and then have the opportunity to earn another seven? Of course, would it? Yeah, it's, it's, it, you're effectively yes. incentivizing yourself. Absolutely, what you're and it's playing devil's advocate on myself as well because yeah. we added the success fee in this year. Yeah. Mm. Last year we didn't have the back end success fee because right. a few people were coming up to me and saying, "Well, once you've got my seven hundred quid, where's the incentive for you to sell?" What are you going to do for me? Exactly. Yeah. So there, and there it is. And as much as I can sell, yeah. You, there are people that won't believe you when you have you, to prove <laughs> yeah. concept. Look, Mr. Brown, I really do want to help you guys move. Mm. And the fact that there is no financial incentive doesn't doesn't doesn't, doesn't matter. No. No. There will be people that go, Well, you've got my money, you're not gonna work hard for me. Yeah, yeah. So we thought, do you know what? 2018, we know that the number of instructions coming to the market across the UK is gonna be down. Yeah. Which is crazy because so, you still would have done the same work. We chatted a lot before we came in here. Yeah, yeah. And you'd still got that. Small enough to be responsive. Yep. Love the fact that you know why Mr. and Mrs. Smith or Brown are actually upselling, downsizing, yeah. whatever it is. And you're still going to do the same work. But yep. just by introducing a success fee, the customers now think you're going to do as much. Absolutely. By introducing the success fee this year, we've we protected our revenue. Yeah. So we've made the business safe in a very, very challenging year. In mm -hmm. fact, if you look at our average fee last year being just 699 our average fee now is around 1300 So we've actually doubled our fees this yeah. year. How many other agents out there can say they've doubled their fees? Not many. So from, from yeah, fewer listings, we've still done the same number of completions, but we've doubled our revenue. Yeah. Awesome. Well, Matt, we wish you all the best and continue Thank success. you very much. Um, and uh, now it's time for Ask the Prop Show. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, uh, hang on, I need the fez. Fez. There we go. There we go. So. New tassel. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so yeah, um, there we go. Uh, Matt. So uh, on Ask the Prop Show, we'd like to ask a couple of questions of our guests. Often uh, questions that have been asked previously to previous guests, um, one or two that, so that we can poke fun at Mr. Watkin and uh, a couple of serious, serious ones. So um, Matt, now that you um, have obviously established a very successful agency in, in uh, North Allerton and um, you know are trading well at WG fees and everything else, what would you say to agents that were struggling in the current market and how would they... Would you encourage them to address the balance? Would you say adopt some of our model? Would you? What would you say? Absolutely. Um, I think agents that are struggling at the moment are struggling because they don't know where to go. Yeah. They which side to run yes, towards? Yeah. Go on. Like like any industry, like the like the travel industry, yeah. like um, books and vinyl and CD retailers. Yes, yeah. yeah. We we are now up against those challenges. Mm. So for the first time, the estate agency model is being challenged. And it's the first time it's been challenged for many, many, many years. What's the yeah. answer? The answer, take time, yeah. step out of your business, yeah. look at what's working, look at what at what's mm. not working. Don't be afraid to look at other business models. Is that yeah. efficiencies, saving money in certain areas and locations? And what money. sort of efficiencies do Absolutely. you think? Absolutely. Um, I see the same agents trotting off up the high street every day with their red bags. Yeah. And we know what's yeah. in those red bags, yeah. post. Yeah. Brochures that yeah. cost hundreds and hundreds of pounds to yeah. produce that go out in the post every Friday. Yeah. And so what do people do with them? Just collect them. Well, if you're in Yorkshire, we burn them. 
yeah. we don't waste anything. Yes, yeah. good to know. So, good to know. cost effectiveness is key yeah. at the moment. Mm. You know, if you don't need it, get rid of it. Yeah. Yet there are still agents advertising in the newspaper, two hundred and fifty quid a week. Yet they're moaning about paying right move thousand pound a month. And the crazy yeah. thing about that is, if you actually flip it on its head and you look at some of, um, you know, what what marketeers are saying. That 250 quid, if you spend that on video or video content or even Facebook even advertising, Facebook advertising. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Paul Long, we love Paul Long. Uh, Paul Facebook Long. Well, Paul Long, in his game. course, he reckons you can get clicks down to a penny or something yeah. like that. Yeah, so, I mean, if you put 250 yeah. quid a, a week or a month yeah. into well, Facebook so, ads. So, saving money, but also um, spend, not spending money, but spending time. Uh, Matt creates a, like a playlist which everyone... Uh, songs that Music everyone playlist. in the town, yeah, that everyone well, you in the town. Digital, yeah. Are you a DJ or an uh, No, no. Um, <laughs> Coming we, live this Friday night. The, 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 the playlist came about. <laughs> I love autumn. Okay, yeah, me too. So I love the time of the year. I love the season of autumn. Okay. There's a reason why I live in the countryside, yeah. and there is no better place to be able to talk in, about in, in so autumn. I wouldn't worry about <laughs> it. Oh, <laughs> but also, any business owner, any entrepreneur, any business owner looks at autumn towards being nearly the end of another year. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, It's, you know, we, we can see the end of another year. Mm. And mm. that, I think, in business is important. So I love autumn. So throughout October, we had what we called seasonal stimulus. Yep. So we had a number of posts going out on our Facebook page, three inspirational photos to help you all enjoy amazing autumn. Yeah. So we would have pictures of properties that were dressed nicely for autumn with rustic colours, throws, log burner and candles. Sounds nice. Get your house ready for seasonal marketing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So then we had another one which was um, autumn food oh, ideas. Yeah. So, so you could do this in the winter so, and the spring. And winter winter warm, so it's, yeah. it's basically just exactly what we've engaging. been advocating and engaging. engaging. Yeah. Digital yeah. wear, becoming part of your community, becoming, having a sense of, becoming, as we like to say, the face of your place. Absolutely. Um, and, and basically being in the community. Yeah, yeah. So the, the, the playlist was the last of the October seasonal stimuli because okay. we got to the point where I was thinking, okay, I've, I've done lovely woodland pictures. I've done uh, a nice Where's rustic the lifestyle bit. Mm. So what would Steve say at this point? Let's find out. Get to our man on the ground. Steve says. People always need houses. Thanks, Steve. Um, so, I mean, that's the. <laughs> I end liked of, that one this week. That's the end of Ask the Prop Show, um, <laughs> so we don't need the first. Um, awesome. Um, going back to you, Matt, because today it's all about Matt. Countrywide, not doing great. <laughs> um, Even Matt knows. Not which, doing is a, great. which is a. Which is a crying shame, actually. It's a massive shame because they've got some great brands and, yeah, some, yeah, and I, some good staff. And I remember good. when Countrywide were the agency to be feared. Yeah, if yeah. you were an independent agent and you had a Countrywide office in your town, you were always going to be second bill. Really? Yeah. Whether it was Bridgefords, whether it was Taylors, whether it was Best of Eves. Um, Best of Eves yeah. yeah. And I remember back in Hertfordshire when I was working in an independent agency when you found out that the valuer from Bridgefords or Best of East was going out because you'd be like, oh. They're yeah, going to get it. Yeah, because that. they're going to get it. Because they've got their presenter, they've got their flip chart, yeah. they've got the vendor screwed to the sofa until they sign. Right, yeah, yeah. Whereas most of the independents were a little bit more, well, you know, if you want to use us, that would be lovely. Mm. Whereas these industries, the, these big industry leaders, like your corporates, they're targeted. Close the deal. So, Close so the, the valuers, and, I, and I've been there, you know, as a valuer for Spice of Heart with, with my booklet of, of closing techniques. Mm. And, you know, literally, you're, the, the person is, is losing skin off their bones, you know, they're about to die on you. <laughs> but you don't leave until you've got that signed agency agreement. Yeah, yeah. So I saw on a state agent today that the, I think it's the, the, the new CEO or the group managing director for Countrywide has rolled out what they call their manual to recovery which is their, their guide. Mm -hmm. yeah. But basically all he's doing is telling the staff what to do. Yeah. Rather mm -hmm. than empowering the staff and, you know, have they had a big conference or has the CEO or the director gone round every office and asked every single member of staff, why has it gone wrong? Where do you think we yeah. have gone wrong? What do we need to do? Not just <clears throat> telling people, right, you've been crap for the last five years, so this is what we need you to do to, to get our bonuses back on track. <laughs> yeah. But going into those offices mm -hmm. and saying, right, how do you think we'd let you down? Yeah, from why, the ground why, up. Why yeah. are we losing That's market share? Yes, true. I could go into any office on the high street, whether they are market leader or market not leader, and I could make them better. Mm. Mm. Matt, thanks a million for your time today. No problem. It's, it's been, been great to see you um, and, and, and find out a bit more about you Chris. Um, and your Pleasure. agency. Um, if you want to um, 
pick Matt's brains. I'm sure we could, people can send you an email. Or, they can. I would. Or you know, I'm, I'm a passionate estate agent. Yeah. You can see that. I would uh, like it. And I'm finally in a place where I've always wanted to be, which is I'm doing agency my way. Fantastic. And that is what I love. What's your email address? What's your email address, address Matt? Matt? No problem at all. Harwell Estates at gmail.com. That work. Tech noise. Yeah. We, we, I would <laughs> happily fun. go and chat with any well, other just, you know, right? we, like Chris mentioned we speak to a lot and see people at conferences and this and that and that's why he's here he's yeah. come yeah. down because yeah. he wanted to share it with the world yeah, and I think there'll be system. literally thousands of people out there in a similar position to Matt and wish that they could make that there job but actually detail. they are not allowed to have an estate agency office within 10 miles of B-Dale or North <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. and with that I think there's only one thing to say and that's Shalom, Shalom!